Well, hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of The Shooting Show. Welcome to today's program. It's, it's been a rainy week here in Louisiana, but I tell you, we've got a great show for you, friends. We've got a story here in a few moments that uh, I think is absolutely riveting. So let me tell you what, if you've got a tape uh, handy, the story we're going to tell could save some lives. We've got a, a lady that's going to tell us a story in just a few moments, an actual event that happened. So please go ahead and plug. If you're not taping this show, I would suggest go ahead and turn your tape player on because this is something that you're going to want, uh, I think, to have in your, in your tape library. So uh, this is important. Okay, many things to talk about. You know, friends, there's a whole raft of anti-gun bills that have been introduced in the Congress. Uh, they're working. The usual suspects are after us again. Uh, John McCain has joined the group of the anti-gunners. And I tell you what, I don't know what McCain's, we found out this, McCain is an egomaniac. He loves the spotlight. And see, the media is helping drive this. The media is helping to drive these school shootings. You know what? The Israelis proved years ago that school shootings, school incidents can be stopped just like that. Just like that. They armed the principal, some of the teachers, some of the parents. And you know what else? All the teachers, now we've got a whole bunch of liberal socialism being taught in the colleges, so a lot of teachers are not going to go for being armed. But you know what? They don't have to be. You just got one or two, and the kids don't know who they are. The children at the school don't know who's on, talking about concealed carry permits. The students won't know who's armed and who's not. See, that's how, that's how crime always goes down, where concealed carry permits are issued anywhere USA. Everywhere concealed carry laws have been passed and people carry concealed crime goes down. You know why? Because the criminal doesn't know who may be armed or who may not be. It may be a little old lady carrying a great big gun. It may be whoever. It may be anybody who's armed and can fight back. What do you stop force with? Other force. You know, who do they call when there's a school incident or any, any other incident? They call the people who have guns to come stop it. That's who's called. Why not have people on site, on the scene, who are capable, you know, just like out in California here recently, when uh, there happened to be an off-duty police officer at the school. When he heard the shot, he ran for it and stopped this. Look, if this 18-year-old if this boy had been unopposed, he might have killed somebody. You see, that's why they go down there, because there's no resistance. It's like, oh, well, there's a fire at school. Well, let's take all the fire extinguishers out because that might encourage somebody to start a fire. We got fire extinguishers. That's how crazy it is to not have anybody at the school that's capable of stopping violence. See, it's just as ignorant as can be. Well, the fire extinguishers may remind somebody they, they, they might make them think of matches and they might come down and start a fire. Are we so stupid? Are we as, have we as a people become so docile, become so sheepled that we can no longer think? That's the question. That's why we're here. That's why you folks stay tuned every week. That's why you work with us to promote our programming. Because you know what? I firmly believe, and I bet the farm and everything, I bet my future, my honor, everything, like a lot of you have, on the theory, the hope, that we can reach enough people to turn this shipwreck around. I don't know. I know, don't know for sure. I know this, if we don't try, we will lose. No ifs, no ands, we will lose. And just look, do you realize if it hadn't been for our project or anything else from gun owners in this last election, if it hadn't been for us and any other effort, take your choice, we would have had Al Gore as President of the United States we would have been in defensive mode, total defensive mode. A few hundred votes, just a few hundred. And the Democrats, the liberal socialists, cause there are some liberal socialist Republicans too, a lot of them. They're sharpening their swords. 
Hillary is thinking of how she's going to run for the White House. They're trying to change the campaign finance structure to the advantage of the people that already have the advantage. Normal thing. On how much time we have left to reach more Americans. Only way we can stop it. This is it. We've got to do it on TV, friends. Radio is a huge help. It's a great thing, but it's going to be a combination of the two. Radio's not enough. TV's not enough on its own, but television is of paramount importance, friends. That's why we're struggling so hard to stay here. It is hard. Yes, if you're seeing this program, that means we got up enough money to get on this month. And I hope you're seeing this show. I hope we're on the air. But friends, it is hard. If you want to help us stay on the air, you can. By sending whatever you can to the shooting show, 327 Irvin Roland Road in Doberly, Louisiana. The zip code, of course, 71024. Something else I want to bring to your attention. This works for us all. We have started selling prepaid legal services. In other words, think of legal insurance. Did you know that you're three times more likely to need a lawyer than you are to have to go to the hospital? Three times. How many of you pay your hospitalization insurance? How long would you do without that? When you're three times more likely to have to go see a lawyer than you are to have to go to the hospital. Well, we have this new prepaid, it's not new, it's new to us, this new prepaid legal services program here through us on the show. 26 bucks a month, friends, you've got a fleet of attorneys on retainer. Wherever you are, they've got an 800 number. If you're uh, almost anywhere U.S. of A, you get pulled over, get stopped, something happens to you, you can get a, a lawyer on the phone, then got an 800 number, you got somebody you can call to get you some help. Uh, they have an unlimited number of phone calls, you need legal advice, they will write letters for you. I think the first year, something like 75 hours of time if you have to go to trial. And you know what? If you have a problem and you need a lawyer, at that point, guess what? You're probably not going to be able to pay the money to get a lawyer. These are all A-rated American Bar Association lawyers and friends in our society. Where litigation is literally all around us, this is cheap insurance. And that really that's what it is. It's a form of insurance. Having a lawyer on staff, something happens to you wherever in the country, in their network of lawyers, and this company has been around 28 years, it's traded on the New York Stock Exchange. It is numero uno in its field. You can get a lawyer. If let's say something happens to you, you're from, you're from here in Louisiana, you have to go to Kansas, they've got lawyers there. Because remember, your lawyer in Louisiana can't represent you in Kansas. Got to have somebody local. What happens if you're from West Virginia and you wind up in Arizona somewhere and you get an offender bender, you get, get in, a, in uh, a trouble, you can call your legal staff. Oh, that's a great thing, friends. And they can represent you there in Arizona. We're not going to be getting some just out of law school, wet behind the ears uh, amateur here. You can get real lawyers. And you know, when you get in court, there's only one thing that the people in the court understand, and that's legal jargon. You know, it, yes, I wish it wasn't this way, but this is the way it is. You, you try and represent yourself in court, it is very difficult because they use a different language than we do. So prepaid legal insurance. We're excited about this, and you see, this will help us. We get a little commission on this. They will give us, and there's no contract. You just pay, you make your payment every month. Visa or whatever, you make your payment every month, $26. If you don't like it, you can quit, just like that. You don't have to go forward with it. But then most people will keep it because it's a wonderful thing. Prepaid legal insurance. Now, here's the number to call. And it's, uh, it's my voicemail number, and we've got a little staff of people that are helping out on this. And you'll be called back within 24 hours, hopefully a lot sooner than that. But you can call any hour, day or night, leave a message on my voicemail, which is shooting show voicemail, area 318-682-4218. Area 318-682-4218. You can help our project. You can help yourselves. This may be one of the most important phone calls you'll ever make. Prepaid legal services now available through the shooting show. Uh, it's great stuff, friends, I tell you. So that's something that's going to help us all. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. The shooting show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station.
Friends, this is the new Georgia Arms 20th anniversary catalog. Of course, has our a memorial there to our good friend Jim Clark there on the cover. This is a terrific catalog from the finest ammunition maker in the United States. They have all kinds of great prices on all sorts of ammunition. 243 Winchester, 270s, uh, 7.62 by 39 Russian, uh, all kinds of great stuff. They've even got 308 tracers, 30 out 6 tracers, uh, all kinds of neat stuff here in this great new Georgia Arms catalog. They have components. If you want to load your own ammo and look here, we've got the shooting show in our new 460 rolling kit on sale as well. Georgia Arms has the best prices for custom grade ammunition that I'm aware of in the United States. And guess what else? They're helping to support our shooting show. Friends, give them a call today. Free phone call, free catalog. 1-800-624-6861. 1-800-624-6861, Georgia Arms, and please remember to tell them that you heard it and saw it here on our program. Hi, I'm Karen Powell. Today we're having a special women's feature for the shooting show. This is EJ Coleman. EJ, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm 51 years old, just turned 51 this past week. And I'm um, originally from Spring Hill, Louisiana, but for the last uh, mm -hmm. 10 years I've been residing in Minden. Mm -hmm. uh, I own a dance studio and production company and have been in the teaching and production business for about 33 years now. EJ, you actually hunt. You're a gun enthusiast. You, you love shooting. Yes, I've um, been, been familiar with guns for about 30 years now. Uh, one of my favorite things to do besides deer hunting and squirrel hunting is uh, um, to sight in rifles for people that are going hunting. Oh, and when did you start doing that? Well, right off the bat, when they were training me to shoot and, mm -hmm. and to use a scope and, and everything, it just I was just extremely accurate cutting holes with each shot, mm -hmm. and so they decided that it might be a good idea if I sighted in rifles. So it was fun. Oh. I liked beating them in. Sounds good. <laughs> Is there anything else you do with guns? Just just hunting now. Just hunting, just, just hunting, hunting now. now. E.J., you're here to tell us a special story today. I'd really like to hear it. Yes. I'm going to tell you a story about this little 38 right here. Uh, about 20 years ago, it saved my life. Literally. Mm -hmm. um, I was on my way from uh, Minden to Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, to get a part from my car, which mm -hmm. was a, a Datsun sports car. And I had asked my parents to call ahead and tell them that I was coming. So I was in a real big hurry. I had to be somewhere the next day. And I was afraid that they had forgotten to call. They were to business and, and real busy that day, and um, time was short. And so I stopped at a rest stop between Minden and Shreveport. Mm -hmm. And it's not very far. It's only about 20 miles between Minden and Shreveport, and the, and the rest stop's right there on the road. It's a main one on Interstate 20. And so I got out of the car to, I uh, was getting out of the car to make a phone call at the pay phone there. That was before we had cell phones. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had the gun laying on the seat beside me. Mm -hmm. That's where I kept it when I traveled. So it would be right there for me in case I needed it. Mm -hmm. and, and you're supposed to keep it out anyway. So when I started to get out of the car, I realized, well, I had T-tops in my car and a lot of glass. Someone could walk by and just bash the window in and steal my pistol. Mm -hmm. So I picked it up and instead of putting it in the side pocket, of the car, I thought, well, I had a little clutch purse with my change. I was fixing to go make the phone call. I just tucked it in my purse mm -hmm. and went up to make my phone call and made my phone call and was hanging up the phone. And someone walked up behind me and put something in my back and said, don't turn around, go straight to that blue van in front of you. Well, uh, duh, blonde, <laughs> I thought I was being I thought somebody walked up behind me that I knew this, this uh -huh. was a joke because this was a well-traveled road. It was 2.30 in the afternoon. There was plenty of people there when I got out of the car. Uh, and the sun was shining. There was, you know, I just mm -hmm. thought it was a joke. Mm -hmm. And so I started laughing. And he wanted to know why I was laughing. And then I just, I said, well, you know, I, you're not serious. And he said, yes, I am serious. He said, I have a gun. And I thought I'd play along. So I said, I have one too. Well, I... <laughs> I had my hand in my purse where I had put my change uh -huh. on the payphone, and he said, show it to me. By him saying that, he obviously thought that I was kidding. So I put my hand around my pistol, which was already in my purse, and careful not to put my hand on the trigger, mm -hmm. just to pull it out. And then I pulled it around and turned towards him, and it was right in his belly button. And it was someone I did not know, had never seen before in my life. And he had, he threw his hands up out of his pockets on a little 
uh, sweatshirt jacket and with a hood and he pulled his hands out so I didn't know if he had anything in his pockets a knife or gun or whatever and he started just backing up just mm -hmm. backing up well my first instinct was to get help the place had been packed with people before there was nobody absolutely nobody there and I thought well now I have him what am I gonna do with him? <laughs> but this was quite a few years ago mm -hmm. and I thought well if I shoot him and there's nothing into in his pockets, then I'm going to be at fault. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, should I shoot him in the foot? I didn't really know what to do. It was just kind of a moment frozen in time. And he just kept backing up to a point, and then he just broke and ran. And so, um, but he did go to the blue van that he had asked me to go to, and I firmly believe that had I not had this pistol with me and had I not put it in my purse, mm -hmm. that I wouldn't be here today. To let you know what type of person he was, uh, um, you know, he had on this sweatshirt jacket, a t-shirt, and he had on very, very short shorts. And the reason I remember it so graphically, it had Northwestern State University on it, which is where I went to school. Oh. But they had been cut off and he was exposed. Oh, so, my word. So, you know, his intentions were not yeah. what they, you know, just to be having fun. Yeah, kind of an exhibitionist or something. That's a polite way of putting it. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. When Michael McDermott walked into the offices of an internet consulting firm and shot seven people dead, he had an accomplice, the legislature of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Tragically, one of the victims was a legal gun owner who was licensed to carry in next door New Hampshire. But Massachusetts law prevented him from carrying his firearm in the state legally and on the job. There is no doubt that Sandy Javel was bold. When the shooting started, Sandy ordered his co-workers to lock the door behind him and barricade it. He then confronted McDermott and soon became the third victim. Had the Citizens Self-Defense Act sponsored by Maryland's Roscoe Bartlett been on the books, Javel would likely have been willing to carry his gun legally in Massachusetts. He would have been able to seek an injunction and get damages in federal court against prosecution for his violation of Massachusetts' anti-self-defense law. Lamentably, Javel was more afraid of the Massachusetts cops than he was of Michael McDermott. Deadly choice. Javel and his six dead co-workers are but more data to validate the conclusions of the research of Dr. John Lott. More guns means less crime. It is helpful to know that Dr. Lott bought his first gun after he finished the research that showed that concealed carry laws were the only thing that lowered violent crime rates. Think about an observation Dr. Lott recently made about the inability of the police to be everywhere thus increasing the risk citizens take when they are unarmed. He tells of a friend who dropped off his kids at a public school, and outside the school was a sign that said, this is a gun-free zone. Lot could not help but think that if he put up a sign on his home that said, this home is gun-free zone, would it make more attractive or less attractive to criminals entering his home and attacking himself or his family? It's easy for the media to report on a crime such as Wakefield, Seldom do they report on the two and a half million times a year a citizen uses a gun in self-defense. Don't expect the legislators of Massachusetts to ask for forgiveness for their deadly law that killed Sandy Javel. If they do anything, it will be to make it easier for the next Michael McDermott to kill a bunch of helpless victims. If McDermott were not such a creep, we might ask him to thank the legislature for enabling him to have his 15 minutes of fame. From Washington, this is Larry Pratt for Gun Owners of America.
For more information on Gun Owners of America, you can call them, area 888, a free phone call, 888-886-GUNS, 888-886-4867, or you can find them on the Internet at gunowners.org. Remember, friends, they're helping to keep us on the air. Let's please support them as well. You know, holsters are many times so misunderstood. A lot of people will have an old holster, and this is actually a nice, a nice holster, but it doesn't stabilize the gun very well. It's got a great big loop. It'll go about around about anything, I guess. And a lot of belts are about as limber. Remember the belt that Ellie Mae and Jethro used to have on the Beverly Hillbillies? They had ropes. You know, we think of, of this being, well, let's, let's just, for the sake of argument, let's just put this on right here. Get our holster around. Let me kind of tie this for a moment. Tie it over my other belt. Well, that's, that's good enough. Okay. Notice how with a real limber belt, we'll do another knot here. It doesn't stabilize the gun and it pulls on your back. It's uncomfortable to wear. A lot of people try and wear a gun in the outdoors or a lot of police officers, they'll tack a, they'll, they've got a little limber belt there and it doesn't give you any support in your back. It, it, it's going to pull, it's going to uh, put excess weight on your hip joint or wherever you're, you're carrying. It doesn't stabilize the gun. Well, you reach, you reach to, to draw the gun if you have to get to it, you know, and, and it comes up out of your hole. It's just a terrible thing. Now then, this is obviously the wrong approach. Also, these generic holsters are soft. Some of them work better than others. Now then, let me show you something. Let's get this off. Now, I'm going to show you the rig that I actually wear every day, and normally on the show each week as well. This is a Kramer holster and belt. And I tell you what, friends, I've been wearing this Kramer holster for probably over a year now. And this is a Kramer gun belt. And it's stiff. Now, it, it's still pliable, it's still supple, but this way it's a stiff and very high quality belt. No, they don't give them away, but we're about to get to that moment. I've been wearing this Kramer horsehide holster for at least a year, and I wear this holster every day. And out on the farm, um, I will, you know, I'll be under a truck or, or under a tractor or something, or out working, just doing all, cutting wood, doing all kinds of things. This holster has been through the mill. Let me show you something. No, it doesn't have a safety strap. Let me show you something. It comes out. Again, this is a holster that Kramer makes specifically for our gun, and we got this through Dennis Crocker, by the way, uh, there in South Carolina. The gun draws very easily. It's very easy to get out. Okay, but watch this. Watch. Turn it like that, and guess what? Gun won't fall out. Isn't that amazing? Comes out just quick as can be, but the, this horse hide, and this thing has been wet. Uh, the SEAL teams use these uh, uh, as well, but you see how it'll hold that? It'll hold that gun in, so you really don't need a retention. Uh, let's go ahead and put it on. And, of course, this is a Kramer magazine pouch as well. Same drill. Magazines come out, but they stay there when you want them there. And realize there's nothing but tension here. We'll go ahead and cinch it up. Now then, show you the advantage. This is so important, I cannot adequately, I hope I'm adequately describing this. But your holster, and realize it's not tacked down, it's not through any belt loops, it's just loose around my waist here. It's cinched up there, but I've still got a little room in it. Okay. When I draw the gun, one, your gun's got to be in the same place all the time. You can, your gun can't be back here. If you need a handgun, you need it real bad, real quick. Whether you're a homeowner or a police officer or an outdoors person, don't matter. Or if you're competing in a match. That gun has got to be, you, you can't wonder, where's my gun? You, that gun's got to be in one location. It's got to be the same spot all the time. So you know where you're going to it, like so. It's got to be in the same place. Plus, when you grab the gun, if you're running, it can't fall out. You don't need it to fall out. But, but when you need it, go to it quickly, can draw the gun. So see, yeah, it's got enough slackage. But it's not doing much. It's right there. It draws easily. So this is a case of superior leather equipment. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages.
for folding stocks, for pistol grips, for regular stocks, for replacement stocks, for magazine extension tubes for your shotgun, for magazine replacement springs for your shotgun. How about the executive eye scraper, the executive letter opener, all from Choate Machine and Tool when you call for a free catalog. You can get the executive letter opener, a multi-purpose tool, or the executive eye scraper, a multi-purpose tool, for only your choice, only $2.00 when you call for a free choke catalog. You can get both of them for $4, a $10 value. Friends, if you're a shooter or a gun owner, you need one of the choke machine and tool company catalogs. Call them today, 1-800-972-6390. In Ballinab, Arkansas, they're helping to support our project. You need one of their catalogs. Again, 1-800-972-6390. And please remember to tell them that you saw it here on our show. And now, friends, for our support group, we have Custom Leatherwork and Saddlery in Denham Springs, Louisiana. We have Brooks Communication in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We have Dennis Crocker Firearms Training, also information for League of the South there in South Carolina. We have Gearlings Equipment Rentals in Southern California. And we have Mike and Sherry Harris Pilot Services and Consulting in South Carolina. Friends, we're out of time. We look forward to seeing you on the next show.